Hey everyone, Matthew here from Red Flyer Coding, and today I'm going to be bringing you episode number three of our Sudoku game dev tutorial. Really quick, before we start the video, I finally fixed this typo. Really sorry about that, that was an O in the previous two videos, uh, that's pretty embarrassing. Also, I already filmed this almost entire video and I realized that the code was way too small, I forgot to make it larger, so I'm redoing it. Um, hopefully it'll be even better this time though. But before we get into this video, um, if you guys haven't seen the first two videos, definitely check that out. Link to the playlist in the description down below. We did HTML in the first video and CSS in the second one. So today we're doing JavaScript. We're going to start it, definitely not finish it. Um, but if you haven't seen the first two videos, this isn't really going to be very helpful for you. Um, a quick reminder, what we're going to be making, this is our solution code right here. We have a Sudoku game. Um, we're going to be populating this board today, maybe doing a timer or lives remaining. And then eventually we'll be able to select our tiles and uh, assign numbers to it and play our game just like that. But here's what we have so far. As you guys can see, when we press create game, nothing happens yet because we haven't assigned anything to that button. So let's get into our code. Using VS Code as usual, um, I also don't have the video of myself up there anymore because I look up there way too much. But I still have my sample code up there, so I'll be looking up there a lot. Um, and now, hopefully, the code is large enough that you guys can actually read it. But here we are in the index.js file, if you guys haven't made it yet. It's just within the same directory as our HTML and CSS files. Um, you could always have a JS folder if you want to add more, but we don't need that right now. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to load some stuff before we even make our game. Um, so the first thing that we're actually going to start with is load boards from file or manually. Um, we're going to do it manually. For this tutorial, um, but you can do this from a database, you can do it from a fetch request, uh, you could do it from some other method if you really wanted to. Uh, we're going to load them just from strings because it's a lot easier and it makes sense for the tutorial. I'll show you guys what that looks like in a second. Um, I'm actually going to paste this code in the description down below. This is the only code I'm going to paste for this entire tutorial because this one you'll definitely want to just copy paste. I want to encourage you guys not to copy paste everything else, which is why I don't paste them all. But for this one, I will. I'm going to paste this right here. I'll have in the description down below. Uh, maybe I'll do a bunch of hashes above and below it. So don't copy the hashes. Just copy everything in between. By hashes, I mean dashes, I think. Those things will be above and below it. Uh, but copy paste this in right here. And what this is doing is it's setting up three different keys for our board. Um, each key is an array with two strings within it. The first string is the initial board. And the second string is the solution. So if we go back to our solution really quick here, you can see that every time we create a game, it's the same board for easy, the same one for medium, and the same one for hard. Again, this is for the purpose of the tutorial, but if you wanted to, uh, you could have more in the future if you were scaling your game. And the way these strings work is each string represents one tile, so a dash means an empty tile, and then the number means the number that starts on the board. So if you look at the easy one, we have six, and then a bunch of blank spaces, because six, a bunch of blank spaces, you get the point, it correlates with each tile in the board. So here we have all three of our boards right here, again these will be in the description down below, copy paste those in, and then we also need to set up some game variables, so we're going to say create variables just like that, var timer, var time remaining, var lives, var selected num, var select did tile and var disable select. These are pretty self-explanatory, but the timer will be the timer that controls how much time is left. Time remaining will be the value of that timer, uh, translated into seconds though. And var lives will be the lives remaining. Selected num is the number that we just selected and we want to place into the board. Selected tile is the tile that is selected. Selected num actually will be the one specifically from the bank on the right. And then the tile will be one from the board. And finally, disable select, I believe, will be a true false if we're able to select at the current time, I think. So anyways, now we're going to scroll down a bit, and we're going to have a function that's going to run when our window loads. So we're going to say window dot on load, on lad, dot on load is equal to function, just like that. What this is going to do is it's going to wait till everything's loaded and then it will run. That way we don't try and access an element that hasn't loaded yet because then that'll create some errors for us. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to run start game function when button is clicked. So if you guys remember, we made that start game button or the create new game button. But in our code right now, I'm going to refresh it. If we click it, nothing actually happens yet. So we're going to add some controls to that. And when we created that button in our HTML code, sorry, I'm switching windows a lot. I hope I don't give you guys a headache. When we created our HTML code, though, our start button has the ID of start-btn. So we're going to say ID 
it's going to autofill because I haven't made a helper function yet. I guess we should do that first. So right below this function, we're going to say function id parentheses id parameter return document dot get element by id of id just like this. So what this is going to say is instead of typing out document dot get element by id, which is very long, it's kind of a tongue twister. We can now just say id start button just like that. Of course, you guys can use double quotes or single quotes, your preference. I like double quotes better. I think they look better. Um, but what this is doing is, is this is accessing the HTML element that has the ID of start button. Sorry, my face is itchy. Uh, <laughs> it's going to access that element and we can do something with it. So what we're going to do is we're going to say dot add event listener, click start game. So now what this is going to do is it's going to add a listener to this button that when it is clicked, we should run the start game function and you do not want to pass those parentheses or add those parentheses just like that because then what this is going to do is it's actually going to run the start game when we add the event listener i don't know why it does that javascript is kind of weird this way get rid of those don't worry about it um it'll still work just fine you need one parenthesis though whoops i got rid of too many you still need this one but you don't want the two parentheses as you normally would if you were just trying to run a function uh on its own not within the add event listener so now we're actually going to create that start game function function start game oops just like that and really quick let's just test it console.log start it's had a bunch of exclamation marks we're excited to start our game so i want to make sure this file is saved with control s then i'm going to go back to chrome we are currently in our tutorial code that we are editing right now and i'm going to first refresh the page control r or refresh right there and then i'm going to right click inspect i am in chrome if you guys are using another browser other than chrome just use Chrome, it's better, but otherwise you can look up how to use DevTools. I'm going to click this arrow right here and go to console, and if we click create new game, you can see the start is printed to our console, and we can print it a bunch of times if we want to. So every time we click this, the start game function will run, so that means this is working. Back to our code over here, whoops, one pass in there. We're going to get rid of the console log, but we will keep that start game function, and we're going to do a few things within there. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to set up our difficulty selection. So I'm going to put a comment really quick, choose board difficulty. And if you guys remember, the way we had the difficulty set up was we had our input elements over here and we gave each one an ID. And then if they're selected or if they're checked, they'll have the checked thing right here. So the easy one starts checked and then the other two will be checked in a moment. So if we go back here, what we're going to say is if ID diff one dot checked just like that board is equal to easy zero so what this is saying is if this first one diff one is the easy one i also could have named it diff easy but i chose not to i chose to do one i'm not really sure why either one works i guess if this one is checked then we will start the game with the easy board so oh whoops didn't mean to do that then we will be assigning, uh, actually let's create a variable right here. We're gonna say let board, and then we're going to say board is equal to easy zero. Sorry, I forgot to create that let right there. And easy zero, of course, the zero just means the uh, index within the array. So back up here, these are being stored as arrays. So easy is an array with two strings within it. Um, the first string is this one. This is the one that we wanna put on the board. We don't wanna put the solution on the board yet. We'll just have that to access later. So that's why uh, that's why we put the zero inside the square brackets right there. So going back here, we're going to say else if id diff two dot checked board is equal to medium zero. So if the second one is selected, we want the medium difficulty. We'll pick that one, and then you guessed it. We'll say else we don't need another if because there's only one other option else board is equal to hard zero just like that and that'll correspond with easy medium and hard right up here uh, now we're going to set up some other stuff before we actually create our board we're going to say set lives to three and enable selecting numbers and tiles so lives is equal to three remember lives we already created up here so you don't need to worry about uh, putting a var before that or let or anything uh, we can just say lives like that then we're going to say disable select is equal to false so whenever this boolean variable is false 
it means that we are able to select tiles and numbers. We'll set it to true once the game ends, or if you wanted to implement a pause menu or something, you could do that as well. Uh, we won't be doing that in this tutorial. Next, we're going to say id lives dot text content is equal to lives remaining three. Just like that. So that means that the HTML element with the ID of lives, which should be the paragraph element right here, this one is going to show lives remaining three um, because that's what we want to do at the beginning. We start with three lives. If you want to do more lives, you could set this to five and set this to five. Also, I guess you don't need the actual three there. You could also say like that and then plus lives. Either one works. This is what I did for the solution, so I'm going to keep it like that. That's probably what we'll end up, be, uh, what we'll end up doing in the future, though, if you want to make that scalable. So you only have to change this number. Um, OK, so next we're going to generate the board. So we're actually going to use a separate function for this. Um, generate board. I guess I should keep my comments. Create board based on difficulty. Difficulty. Yes, I spelled that correctly. Generate board, and we're going to pass board into the generate board function because board is the string that we already picked from above based on the difficulty that was selected. So you don't have to worry about getting that again because this is a let, it's only being stored within this function. It's not, if we access it up here, we won't be able to get it, or down here outside of this function, we won't be able to access it. So that's how we have to pass it into here. And now we're going to create a new function right down here function generate board. And it's going to accept board as a parameter, just like that. So let me scroll down to the generate board function. Oh my gosh, this is a long function. <laughs> OK, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to clear any previous boards, um, because if we finish a game and we want to create a new game, we don't want our boards stacking on top of each other and having giant, massive Sudoku boards. We only need 81 tiles. We don't want any more than that. We don't want any less, just 81. So we're going to clear any previous boards by running the clear previous function. This is a lot of setup right now, which is probably why it seems like there's a lot of different methods, but don't worry about it. Um, function clear previous. We can create this down here. Function clear previous. Just like that. No parameters. Don't worry about that. And we're going to access all of the tiles by saying let tiles is equal to QSA dot tile and we need to create another function really quick uh, below function ID right here we're gonna add a few more helper functions I guess we should put a comment here helper functions function QS selector and we're going to return document dot query selector selector just like that I'll explain these in a second function QSA selector return document dot query selector all selector so again all these are going to do is just abbreviate for us so instead of having to type document dot query selector we can just put qs and then qsa is short for document dot query selector all um, so this means that qsa right here this is going to do document dot query selector all everything with the dot tile class um, or just the tile class i should say the dot signifies that it's a class so anything that has the class tile will be passed back in this array, which is now called tiles. Tiles will be an array of everything with the tile class. There we are. OK, so we're accessing all of the tiles. Then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to remove each tile. So we're going to say for let i is equal to 0, i is less than tiles.length i++. Plus plus. This is just a simple for loop. It's going to step through the entire tiles array. We're going to say tiles i dot remove, just like that. Um, and what that will do is that'll remove the tile from that array. So we don't need to worry about that anymore. And that is actually, oh no, we do have more for our clear previous. <laughs> OK, um, so let's go down here. If there is a timer, we're also going to clear that. This is clearing everything, not just the tiles. This makes sure we have a clean slate for our uh, for our new game, so we don't have any previous characteristics coming back. Um, so we're gonna say if timer clear timeout timer, and we haven't actually created timer yet, but timer will be a set timeout um, that's going to, or actually it'll be a set interval that every second should uh, should be incrementing down our timer. It'll be a set interval, so this will clear it. 
So you don't have to worry about that anymore, I think. Give me one moment. Yes, that is correct. Uh, timer will be a set interval, so that'll clear that. And then finally, we're going to deselect any of the numbers, because if we have numbers selected from the previous game, we want to start with a clean slate. We don't want anything selected, so we don't hit the wrong button or anything like that. So we're going to say for let i is equal to zero, i is less than id number container dot children dot length i plus plus so this is going to step through an array of all of the children of the number container which if we go back to our html number container is this div that has the nine numbers on the side of the board this is not to be confused with the board that's going to have all of our board tiles that's the nine by nine grid this is just the one by nine column on the side if we go back to our solution code that's this thing right here we're going to step through each one of these so let's go back to our index.js here. We have this for loop and we're going to say id number dash container dot children i. So each individual one as we step through it, not class list dot remove. Selected, we don't need to worry about removing the selected class from the tiles within the grid because we're replacing those. So they're gonna be gone. So we don't have to worry about that. And the last thing that we are gonna do, finally the last thing is we're going to clear selected variables. So selected tile is going to be equal to null and selected num is also going to be equal to null because these are the variables that we're going to use to tell which tile is selected at any given time. Right now the selected num is equal to 1, now it's equal to 6. The selected tile is equal to this one, now it's equal to the same one, now it's equal to this one, now it's equal to this one, just like that. We're going to clear those. Uh, kind of selected variables just like that. And that is it for our clear previous function. That's all we need to do. So now we can go back up to generate board, and do some more stuff. Oh my gosh, this is a long function, but I think everything else will be remaining within this function for a long time. Yeah, okay. So after we clear previous, we're going to use the let ID count to increment uh, the IDs as we create our tiles. So we're gonna say, let use to increment tile IDs. Hopefully you guys know this with the green code is just comments. They don't actually affect your code. So you don't need to copy down all the comments if you don't want to. I'm just using it to kind of make it more clear for you guys. Um, and I'm gonna say let ID count is equal to zero. We'll use this in a second. Now we're going to say create 81 tiles. So we're gonna create a for loop for let i is equal to zero. i is less than 81. That means that this will run 81 times, not 80 times because it starts at zero, not one. And we're going to say i plus plus. Again, this is gonna run 81 or 81 times. And we're going to create a new paragraph element. So what we're gonna say is let tile is equal to document dot create element p. So this will create a paragraph element. And then now we're gonna check if the tile is supposed to be blank or if it's supposed to have a number based on our uh, code up here. Remember, if it's a dash, it's blank. If it's a number, then that's the number that goes in there. So if we scroll back down here, sorry, I lost my spot now. Here we are in this for loop in the generate board function. Right over here, I'm going to say uh, if board dot char at i is not equal to dash just like that then we will run something and then we will have an else as well so what this is going to say is that if it's not a dash then that means that there is supposed to be something in there and i guess i should add my comment i keep forgetting my comments here if the tile is not supposed to be blank then inside here, we're going to set tile text to correct number. And the way we will do that is we're going to say tile dot text content is equal to board dot char at I. So if we're creating tile number zero, because remember we're going zero to 80, not one to 81, we're going to zero to 80. Then we will check the first position, the zero position um, character within the string, and it's a six. So that means that, sorry, I keep scrolling back up and down, losing my spot. I'll try not to scroll so much because I know it's confusing for you guys too. That means that uh, right over here, board.char at zero is not equal 
to a dash because it's equal to six. So we're gonna set the text content of our tile to be six because board.char at i is gonna return six. And then else we're going to um, add an event listener because if it's six, and then we don't need to add any event listeners to that tile because it's already a six and it doesn't have to change. So we shouldn't be able to get rid of that six. We don't need to delete it. So we're only gonna add an event listener um, if it's not a six, if it's blank, but we're not gonna do that yet because that's gonna be for a separate video because my voice is already kind of dry and everything takes way longer than I expected ever will. Um, but I am gonna add a comment here. We're gonna say add click event listener to tile. But again, we're not going to do that right now. Um, so we're going to skip all that for now. We'll worry about that in the next tutorial. What we are going to do is we're going to assign a tile ID. So tile.id is equal to ID count. Remember, this is that variable that we created up here to increment the tile IDs. And then after that, we want to increment it for the next tile. Increment for next tile. So we're going to say ID count plus plus just like that. So that'll increase it by one for the next one. So that way each tile will have its own unique ID that is incremented by one as they are created. Um, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add tile class to all tiles. So we're going to say tile.classlist.add tile just like that. And I should mention that we are still within our for loop. So this is all happening to each individual tile. Um, this is gonna run 81 times. This is still within the for loop. Make sure you guys notice that. Um, you want to keep this all within inside the for loop, these two highlighted brackets right here, just like that. And then we're going to say if tile.id is less than 17 and tile.id is less than 27, then we're going to add or, or, um, sorry, we need one more bracket here because we're going to have two separate things here. Um, they're going to be within brackets just like that. Let's add a closed bracket right there. Okay, this is a bit confusing. We have an if here, um, and then we're going to have two things within their own brackets, and then an or separating them, another thing within its own brackets, and then the if it's true, we'll run the code down here. It's a little confusing. Uh, definitely pause it and make sure you get this right once I'm all done. But Or if the tile ID is greater than 44 and tile ID is less than 54. And I'll explain this in just a second. You're probably confused. What we're gonna say is tile.classList.add bottom border class, just like this. So what this solves is if we go to our solution code here, you can see that some of the tile walls are thicker than other ones because it shows, uh, designates the different groups on the board. Um, it definitely helps when you're playing to see that. So what we just picked is tiles 17 to 27, although it's actually greater than 17, so really 18 to uh, 26, I guess, because these are exclusive, not uh, greater than or equal to, or less than or equal to. So this is 18 to 26, and then this one is 45 to 53. This is 18 to 26, 45 to 53. I mean, that makes a little bit more sense for you guys. Each of those tiles need to have the bottom border as you guys can see, all these ones have that thick border on the bottom. So that way we designate our grid just like this. Um, so we're gonna do the same thing now with the, uh, with the right border for the vertical lines. But really quick, let me just remind you guys that anything that has that bottom border class, again, this is why you had to watch previous videos. But if you see anything that has bottom border has a border bottom of four pixels, whereas the regular tiles have a, bo a border all around of one pixel. So that's where that comes from. We're going to do the same thing with the right border now. Uh, let me just scroll down a bit here. If two open brackets, tile.id plus one percentage. Oh, why did I do it this way? Oh, geez. Yeah, this one is a lot more confusing. <laughs> okay, percentage uh, nine is equal, equal to three. I'll explain this in just a moment. Uh, no close bracket, okay. Or tile ID plus one close bracket percentage nine is equal to six. Then we're going to say tile dot class list dot add 
on the right border. Okay, so the reason we do this is because if we go back here, remember the tiles increment this way, so it does a row at a time. So it's really easy to just say, okay, this is, what was it, 18 to 20 something, and then 40 to 50 something right here. Um, it's really easy to see those, but these ones here, they're in a column, so it's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, so it's 2, 11, uh, and you know, it kind of counts up in a weird manner, and then this one over here. So it doesn't really make sense to just say, if the ID is equal to 2, or 11, or 20, or 29, you can't really go through like that. That's just a lot of hard coding, and uh, it would take a lot of time. So instead, what we're doing is we're saying that if the ID plus one, because we want this starting at a one index instead of zero for this case, um, if the remainder, when you divide by nine, is equal to three, then that's the correct one. Or if the remainder when you divide by nine is equal to six, then that's also the correct one. That's really confusing. If you can't wrap your head around that, that's okay. Don't worry about it. Just copy that code down. Um, you could also just hard code it, I guess, and say if the tile ID is two or nine or uh, 11 or whatever it was 20 not 2 11 20 something like that um, you could count them out and add that right border class to each individual one because you want these tiles and you want all of these tiles to have that thick right border um, so that way we have our grid designated right there this part's kind of confusing and it's not really important to the gameplay it's literally just visual so again don't worry about that too much uh, if that confuses you but anyways yeah so there we go we have the right border and the bottom border and finally, we're going to add the tiles to the board. So we're going to say add tile to board ID board. This is our board div dot append child tile. Just like that. I'm going to save it with control S and we're going to go back here to Chrome. And I'm going to open up our current working solution. You can see we still have start right here because we haven't refreshed it yet. But if we refresh the page, get rid of this because we're not really using that anymore and we click create game we have a board finally uh, we do have a board if we change this you can see that it creates the board based on easy medium or hard and it looks like it's populating correctly our grid is correctly set up right here with the right border and the bottom border set up just like that and the last thing that we do want to do for this tutorial is that we're going to show our uh, show our number container over here so give me one second to find where that goes in our code, and then we'll do that. All right, guys, we actually have a little bit more to do. I did promise that I would start the timer as well in the lives in this video, so I will do that. It's not a lot of code, don't worry. First thing we're going to do is we're going to say starts the timer. And we're going to call the start timer function that will be there uh, that we will create in a second, um, and then we're going to say sets theme based on input. So if id, oops. I mean that if id theme one dot checked qs body you could also just say document dot body either one would work but let's stick with qs body dot class list dot remove oh whoops not hidden dot remove dark and then we're going to say else QS body dot class list dot remove or dot add dark just like this. So if you remember when we set up our CSS, we had a dark class uh, body dot dark over here. It makes the background color this like kind of grayish, and it makes the text white. Otherwise, the background color is white and the text is black just by default. Um, and then we have our HTML selectors over here, or input, I guess I should say, not selectors, our input elements over here with theme. Theme 1 is the light one, theme 2 is the dark one. So if theme 1 is selected, then we're going to uh, remove dark, making it light. And if theme 2 is selected, we're going to add dark, making it dark. Just like that. And let's do the start timer class really quick. Um, let me just pull it up over here. Or not class, uh, function, I should say. Let's put the start timer function, actually we'll put it close to the top because it's starting the game, so it's gonna happen pretty early. So I usually try and generally order my functions based on the order that they will be called. Start timer, make sure you don't miss that second T in there. And we're going to set time remaining based on input. So if, remember we had an option for three minutes, five minutes, or 10 minutes. 
Same thing as the previous two ones, I'm not really gonna explain this one, but if id time one dot checked time remaining is equal to 180, else if id time two dot checked time remaining is equal to 300, else time remaining is equal to 600. Um, why do I wanna say that that's 500? Not 600, no, 10 minutes is 600 seconds. Five minutes is 300 seconds, and three minutes is 180 seconds. Those are clearly in seconds, not minutes. Um, so that's what that number right there means. Next, we're going to set the timer for first second. It's going to be that comment right there, and we're gonna say id timer dot text content is equal to time conversion. There's another function that we will be making time remaining just like that sets timer to update every second so we're going to say timer remember this is that variable that we created up above timer is equal to set interval function okay and let's close that bra or no actually first we'll create the function inside i guess so timer is equal to set interval, and then there's an anonymous function inside here. And this function, we're going to say time remaining minus minus, and then if no time remaining, and the game, we'll check for that right here. So we'll say if time remaining is equal to zero, and game. It's a lot of code right here. I'll explain it all in a second. Don't worry. I do timer dot text content is equal to time conversion time remaining okay and then finally after the function let's put a comma and we'll say 1000 so what this is doing is it's setting the timer for the first second so it's taking that timer paragraph element and it's setting the text context to timer conversion time remaining because we don't want to list our time in seconds um, if we go back here you can see that this is actually uh, hold on this is our solution this is in minutes, not seconds. Uh, we don't want it to say 300, we want it to say 300 or 259, 258. Just easier for time. People like seeing that better than seconds remaining. Um, you could just do seconds remaining. It's easier. But uh, from the player's perspective, it's easier to read it if it's in a time. So we'll create the time conversion function in a second, but this will set it for the first time, and then we're going to create a new timer that's going to set an interval. That interval length will be 1,000 milliseconds, so every 1,000 milliseconds it'll run this function right here. And this function will subtract time remaining by one, so it'll do minus one second. And then it'll check if it's over, and if it's over, we'll run the endgame function that we'll be making much later, not right now. Um, okay, so now let's do the time conversion function. Right below here, function time conversion, and then let me scroll down real quick. We're actually going to have that parameter time, because time remaining is going to be passed into here, and this will be in seconds. Um, so what this is going to do is it's going to convert seconds into a string of MMSS format. So we should write that out. Seconds into string of MMSS format. Okay, so let minutes is equal to math.floor time divided by 60. What this is saying is the minutes is going to be rounded down the time divided by 60. Um, so if you have 180 seconds divided by 60, that gives you three minutes. That's how we get that. If you have 179 seconds, it's gonna be divided by 60, which give you 2.99 something or 2.89 something, something like that, some decimal. It's gonna be rounded down to two minutes plus a remainder. And we'll find that remainder with if minutes is less than 10 or actually first I guess we have to do something else if minutes is less than 10 minutes is equal to 0 plus minutes what this is gonna say is uh, we want to have 0 9 0 0 instead of just 9 0 0 it just looks better for the spacing um, we want to put that 0 in front but otherwise we wouldn't need it so if it's greater than 10 if it's a two-digit number then we don't need it um, and I guess this actually should be if minutes is greater than 9 I think that's an error in my uh, completed code up there. Let me just think for a second. No, it's because it's a less than, not a greater than. Whoops, my bad. Yep. 
if it's less than 10, excuse me, this is a less than sign, not a greater than sign. So if minus is less than 10, then it's a one digit number. Then we do want that zero in front. This should remain a 10, not a nine. Okay. Then we'll say, uh, if that is true, oh, we already did that. Okay. Otherwise let seconds is equal to time remainder 60. So this is saying if you divide time by 60, it's not actually dividing it, but if you were to divide it by 60, what would the remainder be? Whatever the remainder would be, add that to seconds right there. And then we're gonna do the same thing as above. If seconds is less than 10, seconds is equal to zero plus seconds. So if it's um, two minutes and four seconds, we want two colon zero four. We don't want two colon four. Um, again, that's just MMSS format. So that's why we add that zero right there. And finally, we'll return minutes plus colon plus seconds just like that um you could add spaces if you wanted to i don't think you should though it doesn't look good with spaces um so yeah there we go so this is gonna take string in seconds um so 300 seconds and it's gonna return it as 0300 or whatever ms format mmss format in the form of a string right there so that's our time conversion function um and we finished our start timer function so now we can scroll back up to our start game function, the first function that we created after the window on load. And I think that's almost everything. Give me one second here. I need to scroll all the way back up, up to here. Okay, so after start timer, we're doing the theme. The very last thing that we're going to do is we're going to show the board. This actually isn't the board. This is the number container. Oops. Show the number container. I'm gonna say id number dash container dot class list dot remove hidden. Okay, I think that's all of the code. Uh, let's go back to our Chrome here, and this is our solution. So this is our current tutorial that we're working in. I'm gonna refresh the page, and if we create a board, we have our number container. One of the classes is wrong. Looks like we're missing a class there. I'll look into that in a second, but we have our timer. It looks pretty good. Lives remaining looks good. If we change our theme to dark and create another game, that all looks good. If we change it to medium, it's a different board. If we change it to hard, it's a different board. Five minutes and 10 minutes. Okay, that all looks good. A number container does not though. So give me one moment to look into that. I'll be right back. Alright guys, well I found the error this was made in the previous video, so if anyone watched the previous video and then just decided to go on their own from there, they're going to be very confused. <laughs> but in the previous video we added that number container. This may have been the one that we forgot to add until the end of the video. I don't think so though. There was that one that we forgot to add and had to go back. I don't think it was that. But we have number container right here and then all of the children of number container, the paragraph children. We'll have these, uh, all of these attributes right here. We forgot to add the hashtag or the pound, depending on how old you are, right there. Um, this symbol signifies that it is an ID, so anything with the ID number container. Without that, it's looking for, I believe it would look for an element called number container, or it's just confused. There is an element called number container, so it probably knows that. It's just confused. Um, it's probably didn't throw an error, but yeah, so this is going to uh, adding the symbol will signify that it's anything with the ID number container. So if we control S, save that and go back here and we're back in our tutorial code and we create it now. Now we can see this is all set up, but you have these nice rounded little boxes. Anyways, uh, my throat is very dry. I don't know why, um, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This went much longer than I expected. Uh, I'm going to try and cut them down a little bit more. This one I might, the next one might just finish the entire game. So maybe that one will be long too. Going forward, my next series will be a platformer. I promised some people that because I never finished the Java platformer series. So that one's going to be much smaller videos, I think. Um, and then we'll be using a canvas for that. So that will really be just JavaScript and it'll be a bunch of smaller videos. Uh, so they're not so, so long. So sorry about that, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Anyways, if you did, drop a like down below and comment what you want to see in future videos. Check the description for the playlist. Um, hopefully I'll be making the next video and probably the final video uh, within the next week or so. And yeah, thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed and I will see you in the next one.